Silver Spoons is a classic television series that started in 1982. It's about a young boy named Ricky who goes to live with his wealthy father, Edward. They had never spent much time together before, and the show is about them learning to be a family. It's full of laughs and heartfelt moments as they figure out their new life together. As we dive into the world of Silver Spoons, you'll find there are many funny, shocking, and sad facts that will surprise you. So, keep watching to discover them all. Now, I'm curious, which character from Silver Spoons did you enjoy the most? For many, it's hard to choose just one because each character brings something special to the show. And what about you? Do you have a memory or experience related to Silver Spoons that you hold dear? We'd love to hear your stories and memories, so please share them in the comments below. Your experiences add to the rich tapestry of this beloved series. Nice try, Dad. But I'm through with this love story. Silver Spoons was a popular television series that started in 1982. It was about a young boy named Ricky who goes to live with his wealthy father, Edward. The show was known for its humor and heartwarming stories. It also tackled some serious topics like parenting, friendship, and responsibility. The series is remembered for its unique setting in a mansion filled with toys and games, which was a dream come true for many kids watching at home. The show had a big influence on family sitcoms, it showed that a series could be fun and teach important lessons at the same time. This idea has been used by many TV shows since then. Silver Spoons also helped start the careers of several actors, including Ricky Schroeder and Jason Bateman. Today, Silver Spoons is still important because it reminds people of the value of family and being kind to others. It also shows that growing up can be tough, but with the right people around you, it can be an adventure. The series continues to be enjoyed by new generations, proving that its stories and messages are timeless. <laughs> In the world of television, connections between actors and shared elements across different series are not uncommon. For instance, Don Gregg, who has a background in modeling and acting, is connected to the show through marriage to Bradley Gregg, a guest actor. The series also shares a unique auditory signature with another production by the same team, using the same doorbell chime as heard in the apartment of George and Louise and the Jeffersons. Additionally, the practice of characters bearing the same first names as the actors portraying them is seen with both Ricky Schroeder and Alfonso Ribeiro adding a personal touch to their roles. This approach was similarly adopted by Joey Lawrence in an early episode, a trend he continued in subsequent television appearances. Excuse me, I would like to find a vase for these. Sure. Remember to cut the bottoms on an angle. <laughs> Child actors on the NBC lot had their share of fun and mischief during filming breaks. Ricky Schroeder, known for his role in the show, often found himself in playful chases with Todd Bridges, who had a unique choice of ammunition for his water pistol. The set itself housed a fully operational steam engine that added a touch of realism to the living room scenes. Despite its appeal, the train size, and the pressure it contained were a source of anxiety for Schroeder, contrasting with the excitement it brought to others. Off camera, the young cast members, including Schroeder and Alfonso Ribeiro, shared classrooms with peers from other NBC productions, creating a unique community among the network's rising stars. world of television, casting decisions can significantly alter a show's direction. For instance, Harry Anderson was initially considered for the role of Edward Stratton, but ultimately did not take it. Meanwhile, Jason Bateman shared a memorable incident from his time on set, recalling an eventful day when Ricky Schroeder accidentally disturbed a nest of yellow jackets, leading to a chaotic and painful situation. Adding to the show's charm, the Grand Stratton Mansion, featured in the opening credits, is not a Hollywood set, but the historic Compton Winyates in Warwickshire, England, dating back to the Tudor period. Back in my roller coaster. <laughs> in the world of early television, personal connections often ran deep, extending beyond the screen. Derek, known for his modern style, had a soft spot for classic rock and roll, particularly the tunes of Paul Anka. 
This connection came full circle when Jason Bateman, who shared the screen with Ricky Schroeder, married Amanda Anka, Paul's daughter. Together, Jason and Amanda have two daughters, Francesca Nora and Maple Sylvie Bateman. Off-screen antics were just as memorable, especially when Jason and Ricky found themselves in hot water for fishing at Jaws Lake on the Universal Studios backlot. Their youthful escapades included scooping up goldfish while dodging studio tour trams, much to the chagrin of studio operations who were trying to maintain the illusion of a shark-infested lake. After the show ended, Ricky Schroeder faced a dilemma. Offered the role of Newt Dobbs in Lonesome Dove, he hesitated due to his allergy to horses and a desire for a break from acting. Despite these reservations, his career continued to evolve, showcasing the unpredictable nature of life after a hit series. You won't be able to think straight. You'll be dizzy. you lose your appetite. Embassy Television, led by Norman Lear, was responsible for bringing the show to life. Originally intended for an adult audience and inspired by the movie Arthur, the series underwent significant changes before its debut. The lead character's transformation into Edward Stratton Roman III and the decision to center the show around Ricky Schroeder, a young actor already under NBC's wing, marked a shift in direction. Notably, the set featured a living room brimming with arcade games, which became a popular pastime for the cast and crew, including Jason Bateman, who would often engage in friendly competitions for the highest score during breaks in filming. I got <laughs> in the early 80s, a young actor from New York found a friend in Jason Bateman on the set of a popular television show. Bateman, already familiar with the Los Angeles scene, guided his co-star through the new environment, sharing adventures typical of their age. Their bond was a highlight off-screen, though it faded with time and career paths diverging. Meanwhile, another character's rise in popularity raised concerns about overshadowing the lead, leading to his departure after two seasons. Bateman's journey continued, first leading a series of his own, and then joining the cast of another family sitcom on NBC. Let's go. Who's in the bathroom? Oh, nobody's. See, the John keeps flushing by itself. In the midst of laughter and lighthearted plots, the show faced a real-life challenge that cast a shadow over its production. The sudden passing of actor Leonard Lightfoot, who played the character of Jerry Pembroke in the first season, was a tragic event that occurred off-screen. His untimely death at a young age was not only a loss to the cast and crew, but also to the audience who had come to enjoy his performance on the show. This sad turn of events reminds us that behind the scenes of television comedies, the actors and staff are real people facing life's unpredictable nature. Good night, guys. Good night. <laughs>